It's a Mac off. Hello and welcome to Man Cave Media. On this channel, I like to talk about beer, sneakers, tech, and toys. If you're new here, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Also, please connect with me on social media. I'm on Instagram at media.mancave and on Facebook and Twitter at mancavemediaorg. And finally, if you enjoy listening to podcasts, please check out the League of Sedentary Gentlemen. We're available wherever you get your podcasts or direct from our website at man-cave-media.org. All right, uh, it's the Battle of the Max. Let's check them out. All right, so I want to say um, right off the bat, the person, the, the targeted audience for this video is someone who is like me, who needs macOS for work, but um, can't afford the latest and greatest uh, MacBooks. Certainly can't, you know, just drop $2,500 on the latest MacBook Pro as much as I would love to do that. <laughs> So along with work-related tasks, I also use uh, my Macs for my hobby, which is YouTube. And for editing my videos, I like to use Adobe Premiere. And so for the purpose of this video, we're going to use Adobe Premiere. And basically what I wanna do is I'm going to test, I have three MacBooks here, uh, one slightly off camera right here. Uh, I'll go from oldest to newest when I'm doing my test. The, this guy here is my personal uh, 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. The one in the middle here is my work issued M1 13 inch MacBook Pro. You often hear me refer to this as the basic bitch Mac. <laughs> we'll get into that in a moment. And then all the way here to the far right is a Mac that I borrowed from work. This is actually um, what our teachers are getting for uh, new devices. And it is the M2 variant of the MacBook Air, uh, the most recent macbook air anyhow um with the m2 uh apple silicon so um all of these are all of these uh these three devices can be had for 1200 dollars or less uh, depending on configuration and for the 16 inch uh 2019 macbook pro that is going off of the config that i have and ebay pricing so the config that I have here is an i9 with 32 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte hard drive, and an AMD Radeon 5500M with eight gigabytes of video memory. And so that, you can get it cheaper than 1200, but I'm going off of buy it now pricing that I saw on eBay. So it's, you know, listings that you can log into eBay right now and get right now for $1,200. Uh, of course, if you go for a, a version that's a spec down a little bit even uh, just the hard drive so I've seen this CPU and this GPU but with a 500 gigabyte hard drive for like eight or eight or nine hundred dollars so it can be had for less but I'm just strictly going off of a buy it now listings that appear at the top of the search that you can just go and buy uh, without bidding or you know having to deal with anything like that um, so the cheapest of the three by far is this guy, the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro. And this can be had, you can, you can still go to Apple's website and buy refurbished uh, versions of this, which I don't recommend because they're a little bit pricey. But I've seen um, this version of the MacBook for under $1,000 uh, on eBay if, you, if you're patient and you search around. And, and I mean, it's perfectly fine. Uh, I like to joke around and call it the basic bitch version, and that's simply because it's not that much different from a MacBook Air with an M1. Um, we're talking about uh, some active cooling and a touch bar. And that's it. <laughs> Everything else is basically the same. So that's, that's why I kind of refer to it. It's one of those things where it's like, why do you exist situation? But anyways, still a nice laptop nonetheless. Uh, so in this video, what I'm going to do is uh, First of all, some quality of life things like uh, cold boot times, battery, uh, things of that nature. And then we're going to render a video that I made for YouTube a few weeks back. Um, same video I'm gonna render on all three machines. It's a 10 minute video. And that's very common for my channel. Most of my videos range from 10 to 15 minutes depending on the subject matter. And so we'll be going off of that. and. This is just to kind of gauge, like, you know, what do you want? If you want a Mac that's going to easily boot camp into Windows, 
you want the Intel. Will you be losing a lot if you go with Intel over the M1 variants? You know, stuff like that. And there are plenty of videos out there that show uh, Geekbench numbers and, and Cinebench numbers. And we can talk about that all day long. Um, obviously, Apple Silicon is great and, you know, it does a lot of things well and a lot of things better than Intel. But I'm here to be the voice of reason uh, to tell you that not all Intel based Macs are just trash because Apple Silicon exists. There are still very relevant and very good machines for the money. And if you can find a good deal, that is. So uh, anyways, that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it, shall we? All right, the contenders for this showdown, um, starting from oldest to newest, uh, my personal 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro rocking an Intel i9 processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M 8 gigabyte edition. And then we have my work-issued M1 13-inch MacBook Pro has 8 gigabytes of RAM and it has 8 cores for the GPU. Uh, you'll often hear me refer to this as the basic bitch MacBook and I'll get into that more later. <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah, this is my work issued device. And then rounding out the selection, the newest of the bunch, this is uh, one that I borrowed from work. This is what our teachers currently are using. It is the M2 MacBook Air. And it also has eight gigabytes of RAM and eight cores for the GPU. So those are your contenders. So, all right, that being said, uh, let's go ahead and get into this test. All right, first up, my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. Get my timer ready here. All right. All right, first the render. Ready, set, go. I'm not gonna skip ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll speed up the video a little bit, but I'm gonna let it go in real time. So if you wanna skip ahead to see the results, feel free to do so now. Not sure if the microphone's picking that up, but the fans have just about ramped up to full speed. Now, for a MacBook, it is loud, but if you're a, an affordable PC laptop user, uh, this is gonna be nothing. This is a par for the course, I wanna say. But for a Mac user, they, these are definitely loud. Just wanna throw that out there, since people complain about the fans on this model so much, and I think it's funny, it's really not that bad. Unless you're an exclusive you know, Mac user, then you're gonna think like, what the hell? But yeah, it's not that bad. Just about there. All right, two minutes and 16 seconds on the render. Not bad, not bad. So now we're going to do the export. I'm gonna move my timer here really quick. Ugh. So uh, I do all of my videos in the, uh, the preset, the YouTube 1080p Full HD. I don't have a camera that shoots 4K, so there's no reason to do it any 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 larger than that. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and reset the timer. Ready, steady, go. Again, I'm just going to let this run in real time, so if you want to skip ahead, just... Uh, Feel free to do so. And for the record, I want to mention after it was done rendering, the fans ramped back down pretty quickly. So uh, I think Apple has done a good job of optimizing the fan profiles for this particular MacBook Pro with uh, Ventura. So if you had any concerns, if you if you own this Mac and you had some concerns with Ventura, uh, I think they did a really good job of. Uh, kind of taming the i9 that's in this beast. Alright, 
we're just about there. That went really fast. Done. 100%. 2 minutes 15 seconds. Not bad at all. Alright, next up to bat is the M1 MacBook Pro. We're going to go ahead and render right now. Of course, the same video. Of course, you see right here we are plugged into power. Just to make this test fair. Alright, ready, set, go. I expect a similar result from, uh, well, I actually expect a similar result from all three of them, but this is, this should be pretty close to the M2 as well. Now, um, unlike my 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro, this guy is whisper quiet. Of course, the M1, everybody knows that. So, yeah, uh, unfair comparison, in my opinion. The Intel chips just run hot. Hello and welcome Oop. to Man All right, Man. one minute and 52 seconds. <laughs> for the M1 MacBook Pro. So let's reset and let's export. Again, I do everything in YouTube Full HD 1080p. Why won't it do it? Let's try this again. I don't know why I wouldn't do it. Um, interesting. So this is Wow, what is going on here? So I, I've had a couple of issues with this uh, M1 MacBook Pro as far as... Yeah, you know what? We're going to just quit all the way out. Yes, all the way out. So I've had a few issues with this MacBook Pro. This M1 MacBook Pro. Uh, I'll get more into it after this test, but... Yeah, it's being really weird. All right, here we go on the export, finally, for the M1. Ready, set, go. Oop, 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 reset, reset. Had the mouse in the wrong place. Ready, set, go. All right, we are up over a minute now. Getting near the end. And 100. Two minutes, 32 seconds. Minus all the drama. <laughs> all right, next up we have the M2 Air. This is the exact same video that I just rendered on my 16 inch. MacBook Pro. We are going to render it here on this guy. Let's see, render it out. Start. And away we go. It's weird, like the estimated time remaining has stopped. <laughs> It held up a few times. We're just about done here, though. All right, almost, almost, oh, Hello done. And welcome to Man Cave. All right. Yeah, on this channel, I'd like one minute twenty nine seconds, which is very fast. Which is, uh, I mean, I expected no less. So now let's do an export. Like I said before, I do all of my exports in YouTube ten eighty full HD. All right, let me reset the stopwatch. That back up there. And ready, steady, go.
All right, we're getting close now. 90%, 95, and 100. So one minute, 51 seconds. Not too bad, not too bad at all. All right, we're gonna do a quick uh, quality of life thing. I know there's plenty of other videos out there about this, but uh, the M2, uh, well, the Apple Silicon, actually, not just the M2, the Apple Silicon variants of the MacBook boot really fast. And so it's kind of unfair to pit it against my Intel-based MacBook, but I'm going to do it anyway just so you guys can see. If you haven't already seen this, uh, like I said, there's tons of videos out there uh, showcasing this, but here's a cold boot from completely off to logged in. Ready, set, go. Done. Ah, I was slow to hit stop, so we'll, we'll say it was uh, 21 seconds. <laughs> Done. So, I mean, that's incredible. Cold boot, and it even, you know, uh, it even had to deal with me typing my password hella slow. Uh, whereas on my personal devices, you know, I have my fingerprint, so, and it unlocks with my Apple Watch, so it's even faster. That's a more of an advantage, but. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Quality of life perk, boot times. All right, uh, continuing the quality of life test, here is the M1 MacBook Pro. This is a cold boot. This is completely off. Uh, start to finish, completely logged in. Ready, set, go. Done. 29 seconds. Not bad. Uh, I don't count the, uh, you know, all the crap that launches <laughs> on login, but all right, 29 seconds. Moving on. All right, this is the final quality of life boot up test from a, uh, a cold state, completely off. This is my 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro, so this one should be pretty interesting or maybe even comical as uh, the Intel based MacBook Pros are notoriously slow at booting. But let's see, uh, see how this goes nevertheless. Ready, set, go. Oh my. <laughs> so initially it was promising, but here's here's a uh, where we hit the slowdown. <laughs> and done. Uh, oh, I was a little bit slow to hit it. 40 seconds. So about double uh, the M1, but not too bad anyways. All right, so takeaways from this uh, experiment, project, video, uh, whatever. Uh, my, my first thoughts are, uh, so if you have a Intel-based Mac already, let, let's say, you know, time travel back to 2019, and you were in the market for a brand new Mac and you had lots of money to spend and you bought the 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro. And today you're sitting there wondering if you're really missing out on a lot with that M1 or not M1 and you know, basically uh, Apple Silicon variant uh, MacBook Pro. I'm here to tell you that you are not. You're not missing out on a ton. Uh, a few quality of life things here and there. Um, but other than that, they perform pretty much the same. Uh, one could argue, and this, you know, 
this could be just personal experience with me, but one can argue that uh, my M1 uh, MacBook Pro that I have issued from work has a, a few issues uh, with software that I use daily. Uh, and so again, that could just be situational, could be the way that mine is set up, you know, however you wanna, however you wanna look at that. But uh, the biggest issue that I have is with my Canon software. So I use Canon cameras to, to make my YouTube videos and the Canon software, for whatever reason on the M1 Mac, will randomly just crash. And that's kind of annoying. So if you're new to my channel, uh, I do a lot of reviews for sneakers. And primarily what I use that Canon software for is for my on feet uh, segments of my videos, because I set up my camera on a tripod and, you know, it's way down on the ground down there so it can get, you know, a shot of the shoes on my feet. And so what I do is I use the remote shoot feature in the Canon software to not only uh, focus on the sneakers, but start and stop the video. And that's, you know, exceptionally annoying. <laughs> When I'm, got you know when I have everything set up and I'm in mid shoot and it software just crashes and that happens a lot and it's one of those situations where you can't just restart the software. Um, usually it requires a reboot. If you reboot the software, reboot the software. Uh, if you reboot the MacBook and then launch the software, then it won't crash again. But if you just try to restart the software, 90% of the time it crashes again. So that's you know annoying. Uh, another issue that, that uh, you guys saw <laughs> um, when I was doing my benchmarks for Adobe Premiere is, I don't know if it's a translation layer thing because it's a Apple Silicon and the software that I use is, you know, geared more towards Intel. But every once in a while it freaks out with Adobe Premiere and it just doesn't, you know, it becomes unresponsive. And I never could get it to switch to, to YouTube for the export. Uh, I just had to use a custom one that I had set up previously. And so um, for the sake of the test, the custom one is almost identical to the YouTube one. So so there's no, you know, there was no cheating going on there. But anyways, uh, those are just a few things that I notice, you know, using my work issued MacBook versus my personal uh, 16 inch Intel based MacBook. And I, I don't have any of those issues. Well, I say any, I don't have either of those issues on my personal MacBook that is uh, Intel based. Again, could be the way I have my MacBook, my work MacBook configured. It could be something else running in the background that I'm not aware of. I totally understand that, but I'm just pointing out issues. Uh, moving on, uh, quality of life. So boot times, I mean, I knew what was gonna happen. <laughs> I've seen plenty of review videos. Uh, you guys have seen plenty of review videos, I'm sure. The Apple Silicon is just ridiculously quick when it comes to cold boot times. And even waking from sleep, it's even faster. But for the M1 and the M2, it was around 20 seconds uh, from a completely off state to logged in. And with the 2019 MacBook Pro, it was double that. It was 40 seconds from completely off to logged in. Not terrible, you know, what's an extra 20 seconds? If you're in a terrible hurry, of course, the quality of life, right? That's why I call it that. Um, so as far as uh, uh, boot time goes, the Apple Silicon takes, you know, takes it hands down. Uh, as far as variations between M1 and M2, I didn't see any difference. They were both very fast. Uh, they both had to deal with me fat fingering my password. And so, you know, it was, it was pretty even pretty evenly matched there between the M1 and the M2. Uh, as far as battery life is concerned, so for 2019, they advertised a 10 hour battery. Yeah. Just doing general like web browsing and word processing and you know, very basic stuff. Uh, I can get maybe five hours, four to five hours on my 2019 MacBook Pro before, you know, my anxiety kicks in and I gotta plug it into power. Uh, on the M1 side of things, they advertise a 17 hour battery. And I get, uh, and for, I usually get, you know, for, again, for basic uh, browsing and like word processing, stuff like that, work stuff, um, I, I can usually get about 14 hours uh, on the M1. Uh, the M2, I, you know, I didn't have it in my possession long enough to really give it a proper test, but 
It seemed like it was going to be even better than the M1. Again, this might be a little unfair because, you know, the 2019 MacBook Pro is already four years old. Um, my M1 MacBook Pro is already three years old. So, you know, there, there's been some wear and tear on these batteries. So it might be a little bit unfair in that regard. But uh, regardless, uh, the M1, uh, well, basically the uh, Apple Silicon variants of the MacBook Pros are going to have much better battery life. They have a lower TDP. They should have much better, much better. Uh, so they should have much better uh, battery life. That being said, the uh, the Intel-based uh, MacBook, if you're not doing anything really graphic intensive, uh, it's still just fine, you know, as battery life goes. Uh, no complaints from me. Uh, other quality of life tests I was going to do was like wake from sleep and shutdown times and stuff like that, but I decided to omit them because the M1 is just embarrassing. <laughs> the the uh, the Intel Mac. Uh, for stuff like that and again uh, that's just because it's been optimized for that and it's just you know it's it's not it's no contest i, I didn't bother to even put that in this video uh, if you want to see stuff like that there's plenty of videos out there showing uh, apple silicon products just embarrassing uh, intel based macs so plenty of that out there already but my takeaways final takeaway so if you don't need no, let me start over. So if you need an Intel based MacBook, if you like boot camping into Windows or, you know, whatever the reason is, if you need an Intel based MacBook, there is nothing wrong with the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, this spec specifically. Now, I know that the i7 spec had other issues, but uh, I've never had an i7 2019, so I can't really say yes or no. But the i9 is fine. Uh, if you if you need an Intel-based Mac, I highly recommend that. Uh, there's also the old uh, unibody MacBooks to consider. Those are also great machines and great value for money. Um, I actually have a unibody MacBook, but it's not it's not in working condition at the moment. Otherwise, I would have included it in this test. That would have been great. Uh, but it's not in working condition. Uh, however, that is still great value for money and using open core, you can actually get it up to Ventura if you so please. Uh, but usually as is, you know, you throw some RAM and an SSD in there, the unibody is fine. Uh, but, you know, if we're speaking on more modern, uh, still supported hardware, the uh, 2019 MacBook Pro is fine. If you don't need the Intel CPU and if you don't need the larger screen, like, some people, myself included, I prefer the larger screen, especially when I use my laptop for editing. Uh, having more real estate is better. Uh, but if you don't care about that and you don't need the larger screen, the M1 is actually the winner here. Uh, like I said, you can find these all day long used sub $1,000. Um, and performance wise, it's still just as good. I mean, there's a reason why Apple throttled back on production of the M2 Max, and that is because the M1 is too good. They made the M1 too good, and so people aren't upgrading. That being said, you can still find these used, and they are, you know, great value for money. So the overall winner of this competition has to be the M1 MacBook Pro, regardless of, you know, the negative things I said at the beginning. But, or, you know, my nickname for it, the basic bitch MacBook. That being said, the, uh, the M1 MacBook Air should also have your attention if you, don't, uh, if you don't need active cooling. So the M1s don't run hot, really. And so without active cooling, it's not really that much different. Yeah, get an M1 Air. But because I don't have an M1 Air included in this test, I'm going to say the M1 Pro is, is the winner. Uh, the M2 MacBook Air that I had for this test is is an awesome machine. It, it looks great. They brought back MagSafe and they brought back the HDMI port and they brought back a uh, card reader and it's great. All the ports that they took away are back and it's a it's a great machine. If you have you know $1,200 to spend and you don't need the 16 inch screen and you don't need an Intel based processor, get the M M2 Air. It's a great machine. Uh, it's a great machine and it performs very well. So 
I think it's uh, well enough for, you know, light video editing like what I do and for, you know, daily use, it's a, it's a great machine. But overall of this test that I did here for bang for buck, value for money, the winner is the M1 MacBook Pro, uh, which is really tough to say because I love my 2019 16 inch MacBook. It's, it's awesome. I like it. Uh, so one more thing I wanted to mention uh, as far as like fan noise is concerned, uh, again, I mentioned this during the test. Um, if you are uh, familiar with like affordable PC laptops, then the fan noise on the 2019 uh, 16 inch MacBook Pro, it's not really gonna be that bad for you. Uh, it's, you know, very noticeable, especially if you're a Mac user. Uh, it is, a, you know, very noticeable when those fans ramp up. But the fans get kind of loud on this guy too when you're exporting video. Not nearly as loud as the, the Intel base, but you know, it gets pretty loud. And I mean, the Intel chips run hot, man. What are you gonna do? And so of course the fans ramp up. It's not really that big of a deal, but it is there. I just wanted to mention that uh, one more thing before I end the video. So on that note, uh, that's all I have for this one. Thank you again for stopping by. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and help feed that algorithm. I hope you have a great afternoon and like always, thank you for watching.